Here in responsive e-commerce watch website landing page. Today, we are going to cover about a section with 3D boxes, dancing, morphing animation, and glass morphic words of wisdom that comes from lorem ipsum text on the right side. So much work just to make this boring section interesting. Anyways, the section is supposed to get the people to know why the watch people that are selling watches are cool and interesting and why the watches should be bought from them. It is supposed to get people to choose your watches to buy. It is obviously responsive with elements vertically aligned for small screens. The morphing watches in this e-commerce website looks good, right? If it doesn't, well, what can we do? Also, the container for text looks rather pretty, and that's because I changed it a bit from the initial demo to have three glass morphic layers rather than two. I hope you guys like this one. For tablet screen size, we also have our layout vertically aligned. If you ever want to check out the entire demo of this website, then feel free to hit up the link in the description. Also, the rest of the sections that are completed in the playlist with code, and everything is in the link of the description. Now that you guys have seen all the morphing and animation of this boring about section, let's go for file setup and then HTML. In this about section, we will have three images that are morphing, but also the background image for the section. This background image looks mysterious and shady, so I decided to use it one way or another in this e-commerce website no matter what. I like the vibe this image gives. Anyways, let's start our local host in VS Code. Let's hope this browser on the right works good enough. It's not convenient and may have flaws, but it still helps sometimes. It's like a comfort zone. No one wants to leave. I guess it's time for some HTML. In HTML, the section tag is used to wrap the about section content. Inside the section, we have a flex container row that we use in every video and every section to ensure a flexible layout for the contained elements. The images are wrapped in a container with a class of morph container. This container holds multiple images that will morph into one another via CSS animations. Now that our morph images are done, let's go for dancing boxes below the images. The div element with the class box container acts as the parent container for all the inner boxes. Left a BT, which come to think of it, should have been named right a BT. Because its content is gonna be on the right side, is a glass morphic container for text and button. Considering the three glass morphic layers, we have three containers, one inside the other. Left a BT, glass wrapper and glass item will all apply a glass morphism effect to the section. Inside glass, inner class, we have the actual content of title, text, and button. The button is the same as we created in the previous video, so if you want to check it out, then feel free to watch any videos in this playlist from the link in the description. Let's see if we have everything we need in the browser. Time to put some makeup on with CSS. Before starting CSS, let's quickly see the default classes we use today that we created in the earlier videos. Feel free to pause the video and write the code. So this is our button, which has rather long CSS. So check out the link for the code already written from the description. In our text defaults, we have heading text class with very difficult pronunciation for its font family. And then we have our flex container to fix our layout with our favorite row class. I guess that's all the classes we use today. So let's write CSS. The About section is styled to take up at least 80% of the viewport height, centered horizontally, with a background image that is covered entirely and centered. A black gradient overlay is applied to make the text more readable, 
and a 1 rem padding is added for spacing around the content. Ooh, the dark gradient is so good, must be giving gothic vibes. Anyways, back to the CSS code at hand. In about overlay, the margin centers the overlay horizontally, while we also prevent content overflow. The max width of 70 rem restricts the section's width, and min height of 90 VH stores the section takes up at least 90% of the viewport height. For a BT image, the width of fit content adjusts the width to the content, margin zero auto centers it, while min height of fit content sets the height based on the content. The ABT container left class positions the element 2 rem down from its normal position with a width of 20 rem. It centers the child elements vertically using justify content and flex direction of column, while adding an inset shadow for a subtle 3D effect. Now let's style the boxes below the images, starting with box container. Who am I kidding? Let me add the row class here. Besides centering the child boxes horizontally, we will set the height of the container to 40% of the viewport height and the width to 100% of the container's parent. The box class itself applies a large shadow for depth, sets its size to 10 rem by 10 rem, and uses a CSS variable for the background color. It also features 3D rotation and skewing for a dynamic look while positioning the box with the margin that moves it upwards and adds space to the left. This makes me wonder if I ever made a video about translate, skew, rotate, and other transitions, or not. Anyways, if you want to see more cute web development content like this, then you need to subscribe to my channel and turn on a notification bell. For the box before and box after, Pseudo elements add extra styling elements to create a 3D effect around the box, so it looks like the side of the box. The box before creates a vertical element on the left side of the box, with the 25px width and full height, positioned slightly off-center and skewed along the y-axis for a slanted look. The box after adds a horizontal element at the bottom, spanning the full width of the box, positioned with a 25 pixels height, skewed along the x-axis to complement the 3D effect. Looks like three boxes, one above the other, right? Now, all that is left is that animation with different animation delays to EAC box to make them dance. And since we are not in a mode to name the animation professionally, we will call it dance. We will also have each box with a different Z index for stacking order. By the way, while our boxes are well set, did you notice the morphing images hiding behind the boxes? We will fix that later after creating the animation of dance itself. Keyframes Dance defines the animation that moves the boxes up and down using Translate Y while maintaining the 3D perspective. It creates a dancing effect where the boxes shift slightly up and down. I feel too lazy to write the whole thing. So let's just copy paste from above and then change the value of translate y to minus 15%. Now we handle the morph container where the morph container has a fixed size of 150 into 150 pixels with overflow hidden to clip any excess content. It also centers its child elements horizontally using justify content center. For the image itself, the Morph Container Image class ensures that images scale proportionally to fill the container's width while being positioned absolutely within it. The top and left values adjust the vertical alignment by moving the images upward by 5 rem while keeping them aligned to the left. The Morph Image class initially hides the image with opacity 0 and ensures it appears on top using Z index of 9. The animation and WebKit animation properties apply the morph animation keyframes for a smooth, 20-second image transition, repeating infinitely, with cross-browser compatibility. The morph animation is basically just creating animations. 
If you notice, a lot of animations become 10 times better with different animation delays on elements. Just like here, when we use 5 second animation delay on each image to make them morph one after the other. Now let's style the right side of this section with title, text, and button starting from left to BT. Because we dumbly named it left to BT, rather than right to BT. And this video's voiceover is made after the video. Anyways, the left of BT class creates a container with a 1 rem top margin for spacing and a maximum width of 500 pixels. It hides overflowing content, applies rounded corners with the 20 pixels radius, and uses a transparent linear gradient background for a glass morphic effect. Things are becoming glassy now. So let's go for another container. Within the left, A, B, T. Just make everything row class to make our life easy. The glass item class centers its content horizontally, prevents line wrapping, and adds a semi-transparent gradient for a glass-like effect. It also features 16 pixels rounded corners, relative positioning for child elements, and 16 pixels margin for spacing. The glass item before pseudo element is positioned absolutely around the parent element, slightly outside its borders, creating a subtle outer highlight effect. It has a rounded border, a soft gradient background to enhance the glass morphic effect, and is layered behind the main content with a negative Z index. We are basically writing any border radius we want without the care in the world. That should not be the case. But here we are, just do whatever your heart tells you. We have different linear gradients to create different glass morphic shades. So if you want, you can experiment with these values to come up with something you like. Wait, make Z index plus 1. If you want another glass morphic layer, why did I write minus 1 is beyond me. Glass inner is basically a container for the title, text, and button itself. The glass inner class adds a semi-transparent white background, centers its content horizontally, and ensures it only takes up as much space as needed with fit content for width and height. It also applies padding and margin for spacing, a soft shadow for depth, and a 20 pixels border radius for rounded corners, maintaining a consistent glass morphic design. The ABT description class sets a small font size, aligns the text to the left, removes any default margin, and applies a color using a CSS variable for a clean, readable description style. And lastly, we want our button to be aligned to the left of the container. Let's code responsiveness. To make this section responsive, let's start our media queries with the obvious title that is annoying our eyes on small screens. I am just gonna give this heading text of glass inner a small font size for small screen. But if we ever use this heading text for small screens again, I will make font size small for every section when the screen size is below 500 pixels. Let's make font size 2.28 rem for this section, as I have already tested out the best font for this. I like this font size, but this VS code is hanging too much. I should probably go to the other browser. Yeah, I like it so far, except the space between box container and the text container. We will fix that later. On large screen, left of BT looks bad. So let's make give it a max width of 600 pixels. Now it's better, but the images are going a bit too low on the large screen. I guess other screen sizes are fine. Yeah, so let's make the morph container image top to be minus 8 rem on screen size above 1024 pixels. Congratulations! No JavaScript. Since the coding part is done, we are going to now see the not sped up version of this outcome of what we have made in this e-commerce website about section. We will test and finalize responsiveness as well as animations.
Oh, forgot to add space between box container and glass morphic container. While we figure out the perfect margin top, feel free to click that subscribe button accidentally, I won't tell anyone. I will change the value and code later, but for now let's finalize the entire section. Until then, I will also keep my blabbering to myself and let you enjoy the rest of my video. Finally found the left ABT, whose margin top will be 2 rem. If you have been dealing with my dead humor for 16 minutes straight, then, 